What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here. And you remember this PC I built a couple weeks ago, a little form factor 1800X build just for fun. The speed build, how fast could I build it? Yeah, plenty of you guys were faster, whatever. I digress guys. We're gonna see what happens when you take a small form factor PC like this, put a radiator on the front, which a lot of people think is a no-no, and then put a big, powerful graphics card in there that's almost touching the mid plate and see what happens with temperatures, at stock speeds, overclock speeds. We're gonna block off some airflow and see what happens. And then we're gonna put in a founder's card and compare. I think things are improving now in terms of case design to where you can actually get away with this and not be stuck with these, you know, standard loud blower coolers. So for the sake of science, we're gonna test all this today. Cooler Master's new Master Keys MK750 mechanical gaming keyboard features a minimalistic distraction-free design, Cherry MX floating keycaps, magnetic removable wrist rest, USB Type-C and an on-the-fly system with no software making it easier for you to game smarter and not harder. To learn more, check out the links in the description below. Now obviously we want to put as much heat into the graphics card as we can for this test. If I put it on 1080p medium settings, the graphics card's never going to be fully loaded and the test results will be skewed. So what we've done right here, we've got a 35 inch 3440 by 1440p 100 hertz panel that is running Heaven Benchmark with eight times uh, MSAA. We've also got Tessellation on Extreme and the Ultra preset. I've also got my overlay here so you can see what the temperatures are. And we've had this test running now for about 20 minutes and it looks like our results have settled on 70 C. Now the ambient temperature in this room right now is about 69 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's fairly cold in here. So that's something to keep in mind as the temperatures of your ambient you know, room temps increase, this would increase too. But this is actually quite a ways below where we'd start to thermal throttle on NVIDIA, which is right around 94 C. Now the reason why temperatures matter is because as the GPU gets hotter, the core speed is going to slow down, which is what we've got right here. So you can see it's GPU boost 3.0 is in full effect. We are well over the base clock on this, which is about 1680 megahertz. We've got a self overclock happening because it recognizes we have a lot of temperature headroom available to us. Now I didn't do any overclocking on this yet. We haven't touched the power sliders, but what's interesting about this setup right now for our first test is you can see we've got uh, EVGA graphics card in there that has two fans that bring in air from the front. So when you put it in a small form factor like this and you put it near this mid plate, which is kind of common now that you see in many cases to block off the power supply and the cables, we've only got about five or, well, it's, it's slanted a little bit. So we've got less airflow in the back than the front. It's kind of, you know, sagging a little bit but it's actually not able to pull up a whole lot of air right there. Now, even though we have a front mounted radiator, we're not going under a lot of CPU loads. So we're not putting much heat into that rad, but we are obviously uh, decreasing the amount of intake air. And if you look at the front of this case too, it is a solid front panel right here. That's only pulling in air from these, you know, perforations on the side. So we've, we've got a pretty good amount of airflow, but this is still not the most ideal, which is obviously a good for this test. We want to see what happens under the less than ideal situations. Now the thing about the NZXT 200i is the fact that it has these in the mid plate, it has these holes that are there. Now they're not super dense, so it's still a decent amount of air that is being blocked off, but I kind of want to see what happens if we now take those holes and block them off. So I got a piece of tracing paper and I'm just going to block off those holes because I think a lot of case manufacturers have a solid panel there, at least based on what I've seen. So if we take this now and it can't get any of that air, from down into the shroud, I'm curious as to how much the temperature is going to change. Now, ideally you wouldn't want to, you know, choke off your graphics card, but not all cases have that perforation. In fact, most of them, it's a solid panel. So uh, obviously we want to see what the worst case is going to be. Immediately you can see we've already shot up almost 3C though. It was sitting about 71. And in a matter of about 60 seconds, we've come up to 73C and our core clock has already started to drop a little bit. So we're still sitting at the 1911, but we're dropping down into the higher to mid 1800s. So we're just gonna let that go for a little while now. Maybe we'll let it kind of equalize for about 10 minutes and we'll come back and see where it's at. Transition. So it's been running for about 10 more minutes now and it hasn't really changed that much. So we gained about two to three C, which I guess makes sense given the fact that we blocked off the air, obviously. But what we're thinking now is that the fan curve made up for it. You could see where the temperatures shot up right here. This is where we put the paper in. This is where we came in here to add our fan curve. Our max fan speed was 58%. And that's still pretty inaudible 
for the EVGA cooler. And if you have an aftermarket graphics card, that's pretty much what you can expect. So what we're gonna do now though, we're gonna do the overclock side of things before we jump over to the founder's card. I'm not gonna actually add more megahertz to the card. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the power limit, or at least raise that up really high, because that's now gonna allow the graphics card to just overclock itself even further. So if we come over here, you see our power limit set to 100, our temp limit set to 84. If I just max this out and I don't touch core clock or memory clock, we will see an increase in heat, but we'll also see an increase in core clock. You'll notice we're not fluctuating now nearly as much. So until this temperature starts to rise to wherever its P states are in its BIOS, this won't start stepping down. But more importantly, that's gonna stay more consistent, which hopefully now will create more heat. So we're gonna let this run for another 10 minutes with the paper in there. We're gonna see what the max temperatures are. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the paper out and see what it comes back down to. Transition. So that's pretty much where we stabilized. It's bouncing between 73 and 74. Uh, the fan speed increased slightly though, went from 58 to 60%. I, I could be wrong, but I believe that's the max fan speed uh, for factory on this EVGA card. So I don't think it'll go faster than 60, but we still are locked here at 1911. So we came down one speed step. These temperatures are actually really good because let's think about this. We've got a small form factor case. We've got these perforations on the side. Sure, it's fully open on the bottom, but it's not pulling in air directly. It's coming in through the sides of the case. We've got a front-mounted radiator, and we've got a non-blower style cooler sandwiched up against a mid-plate that's blocked off now. Literally everything people say, don't do it, we're doing it, and our temperatures are actually doing really, really well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the paper out and I'm gonna see if we come back down to 70 and if our fan speed comes back down. I think the 74C that we're seeing though is the fact that the room temp has come up uh, ever so slightly and I think that that's what that is because as you bring up the ambient temperature in the room, your temperatures in your graphics cards and your system and your CPU are going to rise incrementally with the ambient temperatures. So I just pulled out the paper and we're gonna just let this run now and see if it comes back down. I think it will. Interestingly enough, or maybe not, we stayed at roughly the same temperature. It didn't really fluctuate much, but check it out. We're staying at a slightly cooler temp with less fan percent or fan RPM needed. And we stayed slightly higher on the core clock and it's not bouncing around. So obviously the perforations in this particular case are doing something and blocking them off didn't actually seem to make much of a difference. So I went ahead and decided I'm not gonna run the founder's card in there because we already know that this is gonna be less affected by the case than a card like that. And the, the air coming out of here is definitely warm, but now the ultimate test, right? Well, Jay, you should take this card and put it in a big case and see if you get the same results. What I'm gonna kinda do here is I'm just gonna take off the side panel, open this up so no longer is the intake or the overall volume of this chassis gonna affect the temperatures of the GPU we are just gonna see now what happens as we let it just sort of have all the air. Breathe, my friend, breathe. And I'm gonna kind of prop this up a little bit here so that we're not sagging. And see if that makes any difference. Okay, that theory in the wide shot, that's what you Whoa! Oh God, don't go in the fan. <laughs> oh shit, that went like all the way back there. Shut up, Nick. Uh, can you grab a screwdriver or something for me from <laughs> the toolbox right there? <laughs> something long and, and cylindrical. <laughs> and the, oh, on the side, look. It should work. It's not that far in there. Well, it did like pointy side up. So that would have gone near right into the fan. Yeah. Well guys, we've taken the side panel off and nothing really changed. You can see we're still sitting at 72C, 99% uh, utilized, 1924 core and 57% fan speed. I thought what would happen is the fan speed would slow down to maintain these temps in this, in this uh, utilization, but no. You can feel the heat actually pushing off the side of this custom card. I mean, remember, when you're doing the blower style card like this, the air gets pulled in and exhausts every bit of that air out the back. And so this is less impacted by whether or not you have good chassis cooling because all of the cooling happens here. As long as it's got air going into it, the rest has, is happening here. These cards require the chassis to exhaust all of the hot air. So even a small form factor case like this, with a graphics card only a few millimeters from the mid plate, even when you block off that mid plate and have the side panel on, we're pretty much the same as you see right here with this very ideal open side chassis and the air is actually pushing out from this graphics card and the chassis is no longer affecting the cooling. Specifically, we use the H200i from NZXT for this test, this test but I think they did a great job at 
keeping this chassis nice and cool. I'd like to revisit more tests like this where we test other chassis for this sort of thing. So why don't you guys do me a favor? Why don't you put in the comments below a chassis that you think is notorious for killing off airflow to graphics cards? We'll test it, and if it's true, maybe we'll modify it and see what it takes to get things breathing again. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you comment down below and let me know what you thought. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.